Hi, this is Torah 411, and today we're going to talk about the synagogue of Satan, which appears in Revelation 2 9. And uh, we're going to let uh, James Brayshaw explain it here. He has four books out about no Satan. Who better to explain the synagogue of Satan than James Brayshaw? But first, I want to read Revelation 2 9, which talks about the synagogue of Satan. It says, To the church in Smyrna, Yeshua says, I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And then Revelation 3, 9 says, To the church of Philadelphia in Asia Minor, Yeshua says, I will make those who are the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. So in short, the synagogue of Satan was a group of unbelieving Jews who were persecuting believers. These groups were slandering the church in Smyrna and opposing the church in Philadelphia in some way. So with uh, that, um, let's uh, turn it over to James Brayshaw. James, why don't you explain to us what you believe the synagogue of Satan is. Well, let's look at some of the pieces of this and see if we can pick it apart to find out a little more about what a synagogue of Satan is. So could, could it really be possible that there's a church run by a cosmic supernatural entity? Could it really be, really be a happening thing that the God of the universe has this adversary who's always opposing God, man, and truth, and it's running an assembly of believers? Why would we find John f seeing this, this, in, this letter writing campaign of his going out to talk to, to celestial angels to say, hey, one of these churches is run by Satan, by the way. Remember, he wrote letters to the seven churches, starting with the church of Ephesus. The passage we're talking about today is referring to the church of Philadelphia. And that passage is this. Behold, I'm going to make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they're Jews and are not, but do lie. I'm going to make them to come and worship before your feet and know that I've loved you. Know this. In this passage, the Hebrew word there, for Jew is Yehuda, and it means one belonging to Yahweh. Quite simply, John was writing to people who thought they belonged to Yahweh. So John would have been writing to a group of people who believed they were doing what God wanted, but they had things mixed in that weren't of God. So they were known as the synagogue of Satanus or Satan. And if we look at the term Satanus, the word Satan in this, the synagogue of Satanus, that word comes from the Hebrew word Satan. In Greek, it's Satanus. In English, it's Satan. And knowing that a Satan is, in fact, an adversary, or in this case, one who opposes through accusations, is one of the primary definitions. Satanus, or Satan, simply means something that's adverse to someone, or to the truth, or a malady, like a sickness or illness. And so John is not writing about a church that's guided and directed by a supernatural cosmic Satan. John is not writing about a Satan that's running the assembly of believers. He's writing to an assembly of believers who have steered away from the truth. They've added in pagan elements, and by adding in pagan elements, they're missing out on the truth of their creator or the truth that John was propagating or proliferating. We also know that being admonished by John for their weak performance was the primary goal. Why would he write to, to celestial angels and get angels to begin correcting the churches. If there were true supernatural angels that had access to God and access to truth and understood what was going on in the human realm, they would know what was going on at these seven churches. And John wouldn't have to write to a celestial angel. So John was writing to a group of people through their leader. We'll look at that in a quick second. And he was admonishing them for their performance. And the words depict Quite simply, an assembly of people who were adversarial to the true worship of God. They weren't doing what John and his God, in his view of truth, they, what they needed to be doing as people who said they belonged to Yahweh. It became a detestable place, this synagogue of adversarial beliefs, practices, and people, where people called themselves belongers, belonging to God, or they called themselves Yehudans or Jews. And that word is so important because the, the the people who said they belonged to God, they were worshipers who were, were adverse to the truth, as were the practices in their synagogue. 
We know that when a group designs their own doctrine, we can't go around designing our own doctrine that's separate from the truth of the Creator. When we design our own doctrine, we are now moving ourselves away from truth. And this was happening with great regularity in that period because there was so much interaction with pagan cultures and religions and worship practices. And many of the early assemblies, they would draw in some of these practices and begin using them, believing they were in the truth. Maybe their intent was good. I'm not here to decide that today. But the fact is they weren't doing things how John had believed and thought and taught to do. So that is that part, the group designed their own doctrines. They're part of the synagogue of Satanus. But who is the angel John was writing to? The neat term there we see is shiliak sabur. The agelos is the Greek word. It comes from the Hebrew word malak. And it's referring to human messenger. John was writing, and we'll see it from one of our uh, interesting commentators from the past. John was writing to the leaders of these seven churches, not supernatural celestial angels. Adam Clark puts it really well in his commentary. He says, referring to these angels, starting out in Revelation 2, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? And by the by that term, a jealous angel, we're to understand the messenger or person sent by God to preside over this church and to him... This epistle was directed. A jealous or angel of the church here answers exactly to that officer of the synagogue among the Jews called Shaliak Tzibur. That was an office of an individual in that first century period. The messenger of the church whose job was to do what? His job was to read and pray and teach and guide the synagogue practices or the assembly practices if we're going to use a more correct term. So that's quite clear. We know what the Shiliak Tzibur is. And we do know this, that John was not writing to a celestial angel. Again, I got to remind you, if there were really celestial angels, they would know what was going on in that first century period in the assemblies. And John would not have to sit down and say, hmm, I'm going to let these angels in on what's going on so they can come around and correct it. Yeah, angel one, angel two, angel three. There's different problems in all these different places. Go figure it out for us. That's not what John was doing. We know John was not writing to a supernatural celestial angel. John was not speaking about a cosmic Satan when referring to the synagogue of Satan. John was speaking about an assembly of people whose beliefs, practices, traditions, and their order was now not in line with the truth as he knew it. Therefore, they were a synagogue of adversaries. Adversaries to what? Adverse to the truth. So the synagogue was adverse to the truth, and we know that the the people themselves, if a synagogue of people are adverse to the truth, they are satanas. If an assembly of believers who claim to be belonging to Yahweh, if, if they're not doing the things that John, as a representative of Yahweh or God, or the Messiah, as John knew, then they were satanas, they were satans, they were adverse to the truth. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a complex concept to the believers of the day. If John called them satanas or satans, or he said, you're in an assembly of Satan, they would know, oh, John thinks we're outside of the truth. It's just that simple. That is a really great study you did there, James. And um, I want to thank you for coming on Torah 411 channel and... Um, would like everybody to subscribe and uh, continue to watch our videos and learn about No Satan. And I'm going to link James's books below. So if uh, you're interested, um, you can find them. And until next time, uh, shalom, everybody.